Hey fam bam, welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things embodiment, entrepreneurship and living your best most delicious dream life. Training, training, training. It is the most important thing when you get your puppy, of course, besides giving them complete unconditional love because they're absolutely so cute and amazing. <laughs> Anybody that has got a new puppy knows that there is so much work to be done and it is a crucial, crucial time to do training in order to have a well-rounded, happy, healthy dog. Okay, so there's a couple of main things that we've been working on and one of them is potty training. It is probably the most frustrating part of this entire process because when we first got her, she had had zero training. She was already three and a half to four months and she had had so many different houses, so many different routines. We changed that all up again, gave her a new home, new smells, new routine, and we were asking her to do a lot of stuff that she had never done before. So she was very used to pooping and peeing absolutely anywhere, right where she sleeps, all of this stuff. But of course, that is not an okay habit to keep. So we are working on that. She is in her crate at nighttime, but she also has like a little run that's basically a square. We had to also put a square underneath it so that she didn't try and get out for the bottom because she did accomplish that once. I think the crate training helps. So she has an emergency place where she goes. She doesn't go on her bed. She can go in her emergency place, but she is getting there slowly. Basically in the first three to four days, from picking her up. I spent the entire day with her. My husband was out for work. So it was all on me to really, really get this training going. And I knew that, I did research, I planned for it. But actually having to get up every single hour, stop whatever I was doing, leave the house, get everything, get all the things I needed, get her treats, get her bag, get her lead, keys, get her, get her out of the house onto the place every single hour of the day. Of course, nighttime was a bit different, but every single hour that we were awake and she was out of her crate, I had to take her. That is the best thing to do. Yes, they don't need to go all the time, but if they have had zero experience, they are not used to peeing outside at all on concrete or grass then you need to get them used to it. She's in a whole different place. There's cars because we're on a main street and all of these things are happening at once. And she, basically we had to catch her out. If we knew that she had to go or she might need to go soon or it's getting close to the hour, I'd literally pick her up in my arms, carry her down the stairs because she still wasn't comfortable with that. That took her at least a week, maybe a week and a half to get comfortable going up and down the stairs. And so we'd literally carry her out to the place near the street where there's a little bit of grass and just basically catch her in the act, get her comfortable doing it in front of us just because she had to, because she'd literally been put there and she needed to go. And then we'd reward her and we'd say, yes, good girl, good toilet, things like this. Catching them out in the act is kind of a way to do it and taking her out every hour. Now it's a little bit less. We keep an eye on it still and there's still accidents that happen. There's probably one to two accidents that happen a day, but that's a lot better than the eight to ten accidents that were happening when we first got her. So amazing. Picking her up and carrying her down for the first week to week and a half as well also helped because the times that we didn't, it took her so long to get there that she just had to go on the way, so on the stairs or right outside the door. So literally putting her in the spot and then slowly getting her comfortable with walking up the street, which again took us like a week, a week and a half. Walking is a huge thing right now that we're trying to work on. She's getting there, but it just, it takes a lot of effort. She just wants to sniff everything, which is great. And that was great, especially in the first week to week and a half. She needed to get used to it. And that was also a thing that helped her with going to the toilet because she found places that she was comfortable going and then she went there every single time. Now we take her out when we know. So when she wakes up after the night in her crate, she usually goes in her crate just for a pee. And then we take her out, she has a pee and a poop, which is amazing in the same place every single time she walks down the stairs now by herself. Amazing, she runs back up the stairs because 
one of us takes her and the other one stays in bed or is getting ready for work. So she knows that somebody else is there. She runs up the stairs to get her morning cuddles before they leave for the day. She chills for about an hour. We give her breakfast. Usually that's another time to take her. And then the hour after that is when she usually has digested a bit more as well. So that's like three or four in the morning. And then it's the same thing kind of in the afternoon. We give her lunch, take her out. After any big plays, if we have a big play session inside or outside, then she will go as well. Or if she has a big nap, she tends to sleep just all the freaking time which is amazing, it's very cute and it kind of allows me to get stuff done but she prefers to only sleep when you're sitting down so it's great if she could just learn to do it more when I'm cooking or when I'm trying to do housework so she's not under my feet or I don't have to lock her away or shut her in a part of the house she can happily just be in her own space and then when I'm relaxing she can play and that's kind of just switches it over but for now after every play session after every big nap she needs to go straight away she's learning to wait for us she's kind of trying to let us know by circling the door because she knows that's where we go out or sometimes she'll start whining especially if she's been in a crate training session we kind of try to do them for an hour or two every day she also understands that the big no in the loud deep voice is you've screwed up. But that is also helping. She knows that when she does it in the wrong places, she's going to get in trouble. But I believe she still also doesn't have quite enough control over her bladder yet. So I think that's going to take her another couple of months, standard puppy stuff. I think it's their how many months old they are plus one is how many hours generally that they can hold it in. But of course, when you're having a big nap, things are getting processed. It's the same with humans. We have a big play session or like exercise or something. And then it's the same thing. Everything gets processed pretty fast. But if she's asleep overnight in her crate, she'll only go once and that's once out of eight hours. So it is kind of a little bit difficult at first. It's very, very frustrating. Just make sure that you don't punish them because you you want to maintain a healthy relationship with them going to the toilet in front of you or with you and with your support. You want them to crave that treat so that they will go outside and they're like, yes, I get rewarded for doing this. But I know that, okay, I don't get rewarded by doing it inside and I don't get like cuddles or anything that I also get by doing it outside. So slowly it will tick over, but it just takes time. It takes patience you're going to forget, you're going to screw up, she is going to as well. It's kind of nobody's fault, it's just practice for both of you, for everyone involved, whoever's helping train your puppy or whoever's a part of it. When it comes to crate training, I know that different parts of the world do things very differently and I totally understand that. Some parts of the world it's really frowned upon and I think illegal in some states to keep your dog in a crate that makes sense to me but also it's quite common here and in my experience especially with having her as an inside dog in an apartment that is how she is kept safe so it keeps her away from electricals it keeps her away from the kitchen because the kitchen's open it keeps her away from eating plants or eating things that she shouldn't that could harm her it keeps her away from her toys that are just kind of scattered around the house it literally keeps her safe and it also becomes her safe space because it's like a little den. Dogs need their little den so they can just go there when they have treats, when they have a bone or something that's long lasting. They will automatically take it there because it's their space. It smells like them. They've got their stuff there. It's just, it's their space. It's their safe space. Eventually we will take out that second bit that we have. And we also won't need to crate train her during the day as well as practice. Her first few nights, she would cry for about half an hour and it was grueling to listen to. It absolutely broke my heart and it was just, oh, it's the hardest part of the process, just having to sit there and hear them whine. We don't want her to sleep inside our bed because that promotes separation anxiety. And that is what has also happened with my husband's dog back home. He had her from when he was about 16 and she always slept in the bed with him. They had to take her out for 
and poop breaks during the night, so once or twice every night, that's not okay for us because we live a quite a hectic lifestyle and we are up at five and my husband goes and then I either go to work or I do stuff around the house and also do this kind of stuff. So we just have a lot of, we can't afford to have our sleep broken up that much. I'm already struggling having her wake up at 6 a.m. on the dot every single day because the sun comes in and it doesn't matter how many blankets we put on top of her crate. Not many as well because it needs to be breathable, but she wakes up with the sunrise and she cries until we take her out because she needs to poop and she doesn't like to do it in her crate. So that's positive, but also no matter what time I go to sleep, I know I have to wake up at the same time every day. So we are keeping her in the crate. It's definitely helping with separation anxiety so I can keep her in the crate while I just do housework or do cooking and be able to open the oven and things like that without her literally sticking her nose in there and like possibly getting really hurt. It also means that when we go away, which we want to, my husband is from Slovakia and I want to go and visit his family. We also just want to go on adventures and things like that where we can't bring her. She is going to go to a fancy ass, mind you, but she is going to go to a kennel kind of situation, a little boarding house for dogs. And she needs to be able to do that without crying herself through the night, without completely stressing herself out and making us get a call being like, you have to come pick her up, she's not okay. And that happens, that has happened to my husband's dog back home and he left and she was with his mum and they're besties now, they're amazing, but it's Europe, you can travel to a whole different country in a couple hours. So. His mum is starting to travel more, especially now that her only son is out of the house, which is amazing. But the first few times that their dog had to go into a kennel, mind you, it was a family friend that they knew who ran a kennel and it was on a farm. So it was a lot of space for them and it was a really healthy one. Still, they got that call at least once, twice, maybe even three times to be like, look, it's too much. You need to cut your holiday short and come back because it's just, she's not dealing with it and it's not okay. Somebody needs to come pick her up. A couple of times they had to get other members of the family to come and pick her up for a couple of days and just stay with them because she just wasn't okay. So that is something that's really important. It also means that when she needs to go to the vet because things happen over her life, she's not going to freak out and make whatever the situation is worse. And in general, she has her space, we have our space, we haven't had much time for us in general, so it's nice to have at least a few minutes at night time for us and then a few minutes in the morning if we wake up before her. So it's important for everyone all around and that is how we're doing it. We're really making sure that we do it appropriately, we make sure that she has a positive association with it so she gets lots of treats and things like that in her crate. She gets lots of rewards when she's quiet in there and settled. And that really helps to make the whole process a little bit easier. The two other main things that we're working on, one is walking in general, healing, but also just being able to pay attention to us and not the distractions that are everywhere, not trying to run into other people's houses, ignoring all the people. It's really, really great when you have all these people come past and walking and they want to just pat the dog and stuff, but you just look down at the dog and you say, good girl, keep walking, keep focused keep going, things like this. It's really good for her training, but it also means that we don't have to stop every two seconds and it's not an expectation of her to be patted by every random person that there is. It's the same with dogs. Most dog owners will come up and be like, hey, is it okay? But then they don't let us know that, oh, she's not actually okay with puppies. So like, maybe don't approach us in the first place. This happened the other day and it freaked me out so much because the lady was like, hey, can they meet? Is that okay? And we were like, yeah, okay, it should be all right. And they met and she's like, Sakura is already a little bit scared. Actually, not a little bit, a lot. She's a lot scared of dogs she doesn't know. And it's taking her a lot of time. She's only okay with one dog that literally lives like next door in the apartment block. And they see each other every single day. They're friends. They play with the same ball. They're all good. He's maybe four and she literally just jumps on him and he just stands there like, someone throw my ball please to get this thing away from me. 
but he doesn't he's not aggressive at her if she does a little bit too much he will kind of do a little bit of a bark or a nip and just let her know and that's so fine but this dog that this lady brought over we were just on a walk she thought that it was going to be fine she said it was going to be fine and the dog just started barking barking at her right in her face being super aggressive and she's like oh sorry she's like that with puppies so we're like well maybe don't approach her because she's obviously a puppy it's very clear like she was petrified of this dog and it was it was a whole situation so that's also something that we have to really work on because i don't want her to be afraid of dogs we can't always be right there to stand over her and be like it's cool we got you she might be a few meters away and then that's when she just kind of rolls over and does this like oh my god i'm defenseless thing and the dog can just go at her so that's definitely something we're working on something that i have to work on a lot as well to be hyper aware of that but also not so much that i stress her out and don't let her meet other dogs it's really it's a whole situation when it comes to taking her to the dog park we have one that's just behind us and i hate busy dog parks i will not take her there if it's busy it's really dangerous but it's pretty quiet one it's also not closed off so we have to keep her on a leash but we bought a leash that is like a few meters long and allows her to literally run but we still have complete control over her and we're working on the recall and things like that she can have a bit of a play she's getting used to it which is really nice but it means that we still have control and it's the same when we took her to a dog beach the other day oh it's just there's so many things that you're not in control of as an owner and you can't be like a precious owner and that sucks i hate that so much that i can't have control over this dog's experience a dog could come up and be really friendly and then all of a sudden switch and just be completely aggressive or just jump on top of her and not let her out and the owner's either not there or not aware or not able to just jump in and bring their dog up you can't get a dog you can't put your hands in there and like try and separate them like that you have to just kind of step in between them but even then like you could get bitten it's a whole situation it really stresses me out it's one of the hardest things that i'm it's gonna take me a lot of time <laughs> and it probably won't end so that is the other thing as well but wherever you are in your journey i applaud you if you're watching this video especially if you got this far you are doing amazing and I know that you're putting in the work. If you have any questions at all, please leave them below. You can message me on Instagram at Kalilikan or just follow our TikTok at Sakura the Rescue Staffy and keep along with our journey. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. See you soon.